I am putting Whoop and Aura to the test by doing an overnight flight to a foreign country and tracking my sleep patterns throughout the trip with a scientifically validated headband that tracks my sleep brainwaves. Join me, Dr. Cody Rawl, I'm a neurotechnology expert, as we head to Honduras to visit my wife's family and do sleep and exercise tracking along the way. We will compare the Whoop and Aura data to the Muse headband sleep data to see how accurate they really are. We're just starting our beautiful night of doing a red eye flight with the baby. What I'm going to do is track what little sleep I do get on the plane with the Whoop, Aura, and the Muse headband. Ah! Are you having fun yet? No! The Whoop and Aura only track positional data, skin temperature, and heart rate, which can theoretically estimate what your brain is doing when you sleep. But to really know what's going on, you need to track your brain waves to actually see what your brain is doing when you rest. I hate traveling right now. After a horrible hour wait at the ticketing counter to apparently check the baby's passport, thanks useless airline kiosk, we finally settled onto the plane. My daughter Sabrina fell asleep within an hour and laid across our laps. I put the Muse headband on without difficulty and attempted to sleep throughout the four hour flight. I felt like I fell asleep about three times and woke up due to Sabrina flinching and another baby crying on the plane, as well as in-flight service coming by. I do remember dreaming a couple of times on the flight, so subjectively, I know I did fall asleep. Needless to say, the sleep quality felt terrible, but I was able to fall asleep a couple of times. I was really curious to see what the wearables picked up from the flight, and I analyzed the data as soon as we landed in Miami for a layover. Luckily, Muse just published their sleep data for the Muse S, which is at least 85% accurate compared to gold standard polysomography, so I felt confident moving forward with these exploratory tests. First of all, the Whoop did not even detect any sleep. Maybe I was moving around too much or there just wasn't enough change in my positioning or heart rate for it to detect me actually falling asleep on the plane. But interestingly enough, in comparison, the Aura Ring did detect what it called a two hour nap. It gave me 24 sleep points that it apparently would add to my score out of 100 if I were to sleep later that night. But I was really excited to find that the Muse did detect the few times I fell asleep. There were two 30 minute periods of light sleep at the beginning and end of the flight. And there were two brief five minute stints as well. And this tracked pretty closely to what I experienced. You can actually see that period in the middle of the flight where the other child woke up and was crying. My baby didn't do that because she's the best but I did record my worst Muse sleep quality score ever with the 14. From this data alone, we can already see that Muse does a better job of tracking sleep in extreme circumstances compared to Aura and Whoop. Next, we'll see how these wearables compare a more normal nights of sleep, and then we'll see how they relate to a new feature with the Muse where you can get the relative age of your own brain measured. I myself am increasingly concerned about this data in my own life because Muse recently gave me a brain age metric for my sleep and meditation sessions that was not good. I'll be sure to share those results at the end of this video after we take a look at how my more normal nights of sleep looked in comparison to the flight. When we got to Roatan, I was simply exhausted, guys, tired to my bones. To be honest, I wanted to stay up the whole initial day to get sleep data at night, but I will admit to passing out for about two hours in the late morning to recharge. But I did make sure to get all the data after that. I made sure to track all my workouts and activities in Roatan with the wearables to include running on the dirt road, walking around the forest, looking at lizards and butterflies, and hanging out on the beach. According to Whoop, I should have rested more while on the island because I really didn't physically recharge according to my HRV and sleep metrics until well into the next week when we were staying with my in-laws on the mainland. And I didn't even consume any alcohol, sugar, or fried food while I was on the island. But there was just so much to do in Roatan that I wanted to make the most of it. For example, my wife and I went snorkeling around coral reefs while her parents watched the baby one day, which was really nice. Whoop and Aura held up well in the humidity and shallow saltwater submersion, which was a relief. Keeping all my gear charged and ready required a bag full of chargers, but luckily the outlets on Honduras are American style and I was diligent about getting all the data. And just a word of warning if you are at home or traveling with the Muse while doing sleep tracking, it will mark up white pillows a bit. So either get a darker pillowcase or just hide the evidence if you are a shameful American traveler like me. Muse, look what you did to their pillows. Bad Muse. Bad.
On my first night of sleep after the overnight travel, the sleep trackers lined up more closely. Muse gave a score of 80, Whoop score 79, and Aura 77. I noticed that Muse tends to report longer time asleep than the other wearables for me. For instance, my time in bed for this night was 8 hours 42 minutes, while my time asleep was 8 hours 24 minutes. In contrast with the Whoop, time in bed was 8 hours 4 minutes, and time asleep was only 6 hours 50 minutes. Aura reported more closely to the Muse with time in bed 8 hours 41 minutes, with total sleep 7 hours and 7 minutes. This reminds me of something that my friend Chervin Shares talks about in his videos, that sometimes these wearables can actually under-report how well we are actually doing, which will actually lead to something called sleep tracker anxiety. So it's important to take sleep data from wearables that don't track the brain, like Whoop and Aura, with a grain of salt. For example, this article reported that sleep trackers generally track wakefulness versus sleep at 78% with only 38% accuracy in sleep latency. This is actually what I'm seeing with the Muse headband reporting faster sleep latency and longer sleep duration than Aura or Whoop. It's also interesting how these wearables report things a little differently. Doing this work made me realize that there's really no standardization of sleep reporting. The Muse reports sleep stages and deep sleep intensity, while Whoop claims to report quote unquote restorative sleep, which can combines deep and REM stages to give a recommendation on the amount of sleep needed, and Aura attempts to break REM and deep sleep measurements apart and give an efficiency score. Needless to say, there's a lot of data here to interpret, and not all of it lines up. If I had a suggestion for Muse, I think that they should make the REM and deep sleep metrics more obvious on the sleep report, and perhaps combine them into a sleep efficiency or restorative sleep score like the other wearables have done. I know that they are working on a more broad category metric called brain age that takes a lot of brain measurements into account that is very interesting and we'll talk about here in a second. These health data tracking wearables are really the tip of the iceberg in my new push into longevity medicine and evaluating my own health. The data that they are collecting and giving me is concerning because you really realize how something like drinking alcohol or doing a red-eye flight affects you for days and weeks afterwards. I recorded some thoughts about overnight travel while still in Honduras. Would you ever take an overnight flight with an infant again? No. Never. I don't think I'll ever in my life take an overnight flight again like I did on this trip. It's just not worth it to me. I'd rather spend the extra money to travel during the day so I don't mess up my circadian rhythm and just feel sleep deprived for days into the vacation and then be all tired when I get back from the trip. The data from two other nights before my trip paints a more consistent story of what's going on with these sleep wearables and helps us rank their accuracy levels. For example, my daughter was going through a teething episode and the 30th of August was a particularly bad night. My wife got up and brought her from the crib to our bed, so I actually didn't get up with any positional change or increase in my heart rate to cue off the whoop or the aura, but I had the Muse S on. And the poor girl was crying and whimpering every half hour, so I know that I was in a very light sleep. The aura and the whoop reported a decent night of sleep, but the Muse definitely knew better. It could tell that I was hypervigilant and sleeping into light sleep stages for the most part without any restorative deep sleep. So despite being in bed for eight and a half hours and a whoop score of 80%, my Muse score was only a 69. The Muse score lined up more closely with my subjective experience because I felt very unrested and low energy with some irritability the next day. Compare this to the 11th of June when my wife and daughter were out of town and I was getting much better sleep. For some reason on this night, the whoop didn't even start tracking my sleep until well after I went to bed and gave me a poor score, but Muse recorded a great great night of sleep of 80. Now regarding those Muse brain age metrics, I had a call with co-founder of Muse, Chris Aamoni, in August before my trip, and he gave me some preliminary data on how my brain is doing. The dotted line is my current age of 36. You can see that my meditation brain age is often as low as 25 years old in the right environment, but my sleep brain age has been way higher in the 40s and 50s. This is information that's just not being picked up by Aura or Whoop. Despite having some great meditation brain age scores, my sleep brain age is just terrible right now. I asked him if this could be due to having an 11 month old at home. My wife actually got mad at me because I was describing this to her last night. And basically what had happened was on the, uh, the 6th of June, she went out of town with the baby 
uh, to go visit friends in Pennsylvania and my sleep immediately started getting better and my brain age got better and better <laughs> when they were gone. So I was like, look, my brain's healthy when you guys are here. And she didn't take that the right way. Yeah. So it's, in, it's interesting. I think, you know, when we looked at your uh, brain age uh, for sleep, it was scoring, um, you know, higher than we would expect it to. And when we looked at your spectral data, uh, what we see is for whatever the reason, your sleep spindles aren't as uh, strong in amplitude as is typical, which doesn't mean there's necessarily anything wrong with them. But I guess part of how they manifest at the electrodes that the muse measures, you know, is a uh, lower amplitude than normal. Do you think that being a new father and having uh, an infant, I mean, she's sleeping through the night a little bit better now. She's 10 months, but uh, do you think that could be part of what's going on with my sleep? Maybe. Yeah, actually, that's a really good point because um, I would expect that with an infant, you are much more attuned to sensory stimuli um, while you're sleeping, especially in light sleep. So it's really not any question for me at this point, after seeing it in multiple circumstances, that Muse out of the three is the best for tracking sleep. I will say that Aura and Whoop are easier to wear at night, and we'll dive deeper into that in my upcoming review videos on all three of these devices, where we will discuss other features beyond their sleep data. If I take the Muse data as a semi-gold standard for this trip and the tracking that I did at home, I would say that Aura actually did better than the Whoop in matching time in bed, sleep latency, and sleep quality, but I wouldn't say that this is a good enough reason not to buy a Whoop because I feel like the Whoop actually does a better job of tracking physical recovery and readiness as we saw in my visit to Roatan. If you look at the Aura scores, they're really consistent throughout that whole weekend, but Whoop knew better. You can find discount links to these devices below if you are interested in supporting the channel. And if you want to learn more about the Muse Brain Age metric and get your own score, click on this video here for a special opportunity to the Tech Versace audience from Muse.